There's been a lot of questions come up me lately, whether it be via email or in comments, and quite a few of you have taken on the, the journey of trying to work your way into the heavier side and the chiller side and just advancing yourself. And I think that's fantastic. I really do. And I encourage you to do that. And one big question that I get out of people going down that road is where do I start? Or what's something I could do? Or, you know, how did you do it? It's it just, it's a very common question. Not to answer that question specifically, because I have talked about that quite a bit over time, and I'll talk about it more as time goes on. What it also has me in mind of is niches. And even within each thing, so honestly, the chiller side itself is, it's a niche, but even inside of chillers, it's such a broad spectrum of things you could do, much like anything else in this industry, there's a ton of just niches, just in case you're not completely sure what I'm talking about when I say a niche. I mean like a, a, a subset or a, a specialty, something you specialize in, you claim to be really good at or you're gonna going to be good at in some way and say you're gonna have more knowledge than the average person on that specific thing. That would be a niche of some kind. Uh, to give example, maybe it's the electrical troubleshooting or maybe it's uh, knowing how to do overhauls extremely well. So there's a lot of chiller techs out there. There's a lot of guys who can work on chillers in general, but there's not that many people, even inside of the chiller market, that actually have overhaul capabilities. Being able to do an overhaul is is a skill, you know, it's one thing, you can go to the class, you can get certified. To actually go translate that to an actual real world where you're having to physically do that overhaul, it's not the same thing, like not even close. So the point is, it's a niche. Like it's, it's something that you have built a very specific skill inside of a broader skill that you are capable of doing that genuinely a lot of people aren't. And it's very similar to, you know, homesteading. This is just a piece of my life and what, I'm, what I do. Uh, this is a thing that I get my family involved in. I was raised doing this sort of thing. You know, and this was just a, a small segment of it. Right now, you know, we're developing a chicken business. We wanna sell eggs, we wanna sell meat, we want to do that. And we're doing it by first just figuring out what breeds we even like working with. And so we're honing our our time on learning the specific breeds, what we like about them, their characteristics, do they fit in our environment very well? And I think that translates to what you're doing out there. I had to specifically learn specific segments of what fits my area, my market, and so hence chickens in this climate. Chickens in this climate are going to react very differently than in other climates. And that's something we have to take into an account. And so yes, we're learning the, you know, the niche details of different breeds and we're not diving super deep into one specific breed or one specific way of doing things or process or feed or any of the, all the little things that can make you more successful over time because it's not time for that yet. We're not ready for that in our process of developing chickens. Like we grew up with chickens, we know how to tend to chickens, but we never had a chicken business growing up. We never did anything more than just our own thing. It never involved other people. And that's, that's something we're doing now. And I've got to go through that learning process for that now. So from a technical perspective, like I'm at my 101 basics of how to commercially and professionally tend to chickens on a, on, a, uh, on a heavier or broader scale. That's the part of the process I'm in. I'm in my 101s. And part of that is I'm having to learn different breeds, which would be learning different refrigerants or different types of systems and what all is out there. Uh, then you can carry that forward. This is how I guess I learned how to learn as I was younger and I just naturally did it this way. I, I wanted to learn the big picture first. Uh, and as I learned the bigger picture, it helped me understand 
what I could do that would lead me into a deeper, deeper foresight into what was happening. You know, it, it, the more I understood what was supposed to work and not work and why it worked the way that it did, it helped me see what more I needed to learn to be better at it. I've been bad about imposing uh, or just mentally not understanding, not comprehending that, you know, the way that I learn isn't how everybody learns. And so my goal is not to tell you how you need to learn, really, not truly. But part of my goal and something I want to shift is explaining what I did to learn. And maybe there's something there you can find useful somehow. How I carried it further, what I did to go the next steps in the process with it. Learning chillers, for example, or learning an automation system. Learning the core fundamental for a chiller, for example, hydronics, just basic hydronic flow and heat transfer theory, and how to calculate and use GPM and manipulate it is very important and is extremely critical to the chiller world. And knowing how your flow works and is going to affect your overall operations. And basically, you know, hydronic flow is from a theory, like heat transfer perspective, it's all about just, it's the same thing as CFM and airflow. It really, like really truly. The more air you move, the more uh, heat you're moving, because it's got more BTUs at a time. You can create turbulence conditions with airflow that's going to make it not flow across the coil properly and you can have some weird coil issues because of restrictions and turbulence. You can have the same things in water. You can create some weird turbulence scenarios uh, or you can, uh, the whole laminar flow conversation, that was a derailment if I ever had to say. I'm still gonna follow up on that. Anyway, uh, those are some basics and okay, so most of us understand evaporator condenser. We know the core function there, that's fine. Uh, for a chiller, I think you need to understand the metering devices better because they're more critical. In addition to that, it is uh, uh, the, the compressors themselves. And I'm not even talking about, you don't need to have an overhaul understanding of those compressors. I guess that's something you can figure out later. You need to understand the basic theory as to why they work. And honestly, even in the compressors, I think scroll, most of us understand the, the scroll compressor. You know, the, they're so commonly used at this stage. Uh, you understand enough about how a scroll works to work on it, even in a chiller application. But a screw, on the other hand, like, you should really understand screw's function. Like, really understand a screw's function. Uh, and just I'm not even talking about all the fancy oilness to it, just the fact that it needs oil. It's not going to run well without oil, uh, if, it, if it runs for very long at all. The way that it adds load is different, whether it's through speed or whether it's through a slide, either or. You know, it's, it does things a little differently. So yeah, understanding a basic level of a screw is gonna help. And then you take that a little further and get into centrifugal. And there are some fantastic uh, videos out there. If y'all have never seen them, Engineering Mindset is a wonderful place that you can go and get a real basic rundown on how a screw or a, how a centrifugal compressor works and you know if you can get your mind around that and then stand in front of it and understand the concept you are well on your way of getting into the chiller side of the world uh, and it's the same basic principle that I'm talking about with niching as you start to learn a niche in the chiller world that is just the fundamentals is a niche in and of itself because you'd be surprised how many people don't even know the fundamentals yes sir niche find a niche get a niche uh it's, it's it's just small piece you know if you try to take on mastering the whole thing at one time a chiller is a prime example of that you know you're not going to do that effectively you're going to have a really hard time at least i i dang sure did slash would um small piece at a time put that together build the whole thing. Learn the compressor, then learn the oil, 
learn the compressor, then learn the oil system, then you can learn the VSD or the, the starter side of it, then just little bit by little bit, you learn each thing. Don't take the whole thing on at one time. Don't think you have to master the whole thing at one time. Same thing goes to RTUs, same thing goes to split systems. You don't have to know how to do all the airflow calculations. You don't have to know how to do the efficiency ratings or any of that stuff. Can you make it run effectively? Can you make it run properly where it's not going to kill itself? Do you know how to charge it right with superheat subcool? Can you do those things? Yes? Okay. Then maybe get into airflow and really dial that in. Uh, if you can't do that, if you don't know how to charge it to begin with, then uh, Maybe you need to spend some more time on that before you try to take it to the next steps on whatever split system, you know, five ton package unit or a five ton regular split in a house. It all means the same thing. That's the short synopsis that I'm really good at making into way more than it probably needs to be. Appreciate it, guys. MTT, spend the time with your family. I'll catch y'all around somewhere, somehow, some way, you'll see me.